Alright, so we've probably all seen the magazine articles and the advertisements, the ones claiming to have the next new way to reduce the size of aging. Or maybe even the ones that are detailing the latest celebrities' facelifts or Botox treatments. That seems like whether they're trying out a new healthy lifestyle trick they found in a magazine or taking a little trip to their local plastic surgeon, everyone has the same goal in mind, right? To try to find this so-called fountain of youth or this way where they can stay feeling young and looking young for the entirety of their lives. Well, my name is Tammy Johnson and I too am interested in finding this fountain of youth. So I'm working on, in the lab of Denise Montel, undergraduate student Dominic Houston, to better understand this process of aging by attempting to uncover the molecular mechanisms that are controlling it. In other words, we're trying to find genes that are involved in this process of aging, and we're doing this by looking at the Drosophila melanogaster fruit fly. And with the fly, we're looking at drug testing, so we're testing drugs that we've found to um, increase aging or increase lifespan. And then we're looking at a trait that the flies have that allows them to delay aging. And so the Drosophila melanogaster is a popular model used in research as a substitute for humans. This is because they share a lot of similarities genetically and physically with us. But unlike us, their entire genome, or their complete set of genes and genetic material, is mapped and known. Which benefits us because gaining more knowledge on specific genes in the fly can help us gain more knowledge on specific genes in us. And so the flies that we're using come from the Drosophila Genetic Reference Panel, which is a population of flies that contains 200 fully sequenced inbred lines, and fully sequenced just means that their genome is known. And so they all come from the same genetic background. So in the same way that you and your brothers and sisters come from the same genetic background and are genetically similar and more genetically similar than you are to a stranger, these flies are also genetically similar. So you can almost think of them as like 200 brother and sister lines. And so because their genome is completely known, we can perform a genome-wide association study, or GWAS for short. And so this basically just means that we're going to be examining genetic variants between our fly lines and to do the, um, we're doing this to find genetic variants that are linked with our specific trait. And so the genetic variant is pictured right here. So basically just the difference in DNA. So you can see the top one has like a, it has a um, G and a C right here, whereas this one has an A and a T down here. So those are differences in genetic variants. And so we can think of GWAS as like an input-output system. So the input we're going to put in is some data that's related to our trait, and then we're going to put it through the GWAS, and it'll come out with genetic variants that are linked with our trait. So the trait we're looking at for the first part is called diapause, and it's a trait the flies have that allows them to delay aging in harsh environments. So you can think of it as like a program that's initiated when they're in an unfavorable environment, like a harsh winter, and it delays their um, metabolism and their locomotion and their cellular and um, organismal deterioration. So to look at the diapause trait, we have to initiate it. But we'll do this by simulating like a cold winter by putting in a 10 degree fridge. And then on day 35, we're gonna take them out. I'll we'll put them in 25 degrees where they age normally and they'll stay in, or they'll stay in there until um, they live out the rest of their lives. And we'll test them against a control group that just stays in 25 where they age normally for their entire lives. And we're looking for the differences between good, bad, and non-diaposers. So the non-diaposers would be the control group. And so we'll do this by looking at the post diapause lifespan compared to the regular lifespan. And so what makes a good diaposer is that they'll undergo the first 35 days of the entire diapause process. And then after that, they'll come out and they'll look the length of their regular lifespan or longer than their regular lifespan. Um, so they'll go through the first 35 days and then come out like the whole first 35 days never happened. And so for a good diapauser, that would make the change in lifespan, which is the difference between post diapause and regular lifespan positive, because the post diapause lifespan is um, either greater than or very close to the regular lifespan. And so you can see the data for a change in lifespan for all of our flies here. Each of these um, little boxes is a different fly line, and you can see the change in lifespan in days, going from positive and highest to decreasing. And so, as you can see, only a handful of our flies are actually good diapositors with a positive change in lifespan, and they can be seen in yellow. And then the rest of them just don't really diapause well. And so, you can see the lifespan analysis for a good diapositor here. This is just one of our fly lines, fly 138. And it's, for the graph, it's days versus percent alive. And so you can see the percent alive um, for the certain days for both the diapause and orange and control. And as you can see, there's a higher percent alive for the diapause 
on um, later days, meaning that overall they had a longer lifespan when they underwent DIFOX, making Lag 138 a good dive monster. And so as I said before, we're going to perform a GWAS study. And so the data we're going to input is our change in lifespan, and we're going to put it into the GWAS. But when we did that, we got 80 genetic variants out, which is a lot to test like for each one. So what we did was we looked at the genetic variants and the location of them on in the DNA. And we were able to limit them to five genes for further analysis. So this is all of our preliminary um, data. And so what we're doing now is we're taking these five genes, and we're going to examine them using RTQPCR, which stands for Reverse Transcriptase Quantitative Polymerase Chain Reaction, which sounds really complicated, but it's just a way of looking at the DNA and searching for a specific sequence in the DNA encoding for a gene. And so we could use this to look at the gene expression of our five genes. And so we'll be doing this for both our diapausing flies and our control flies. And so we'll be sacrificing flies at different times in our um, process, so day one, day three, week three, week five, and week seven, and maybe more depending on how long we live for. And so we're, we're going to do this to look at the gene expression of our five genes at various stages of the diapause and control process. And so here's a little overview of RTQPCR. It can be a little complicated. And so basically, we all have DNA, right? And usually for normal protein production, it goes from DNA, and then through transcription, it translates into RNA. Then through translation, we go from RNA to polypeptide or functional protein. But for reverse transcriptase quantitative PCR, um, it switches it up a little. So instead, we do mRNA to complementary DNA instead. And we'll do this via reverse transcriptase enzymes. So we just switch around the process a little. And when we come out with this, we get a library of cDNA. And cDNA is just complementary DNA. And so with this cDNA, we amplify it, which just means we make a bunch of different replications of it. And then what we'll do is we put on a little probe, like a fluorescence probe. You can see right here. And so the probe will, um, since it's a fluorescence probe, it'll allow us to see or um, count the amount of mRNA or the mRNA levels that are in our cDNA. And the mRNA levels correspond to the gene expression. So higher mRNA levels would mean like the gene is expressed more. And so that'll help us look at our five different genes that we've found. And then the second part of our project is drug testing. And so we're testing four compounds that have been found to increase lifespan of the flies. Not of the flies, of the C. elegans in the lab of Michael Petrushek. You see I'll get to this little nematode right here. And so he created four compounds and he's allowing us to test them on our Drosophila 